The headline of your letter, Black Swan event of 2020, what do people make of that? We've seen an outpouring of uh, reaction from our portfolio companies and from uh, a, a broader audience. It seems like it's a bit of a wake-up call that we might have a serious crisis at our doorstep. Now, I heard it came about in about 48 hours. Tell me that process when you guys decided that you needed to write something like this with, you know, raising an alarm, essentially, among your founders and CEOs. We had a, a meeting on Monday, uh, what we call a blue sky session, where we talk about trends, uh, what we think might happen in the future. And the topic that dominated was coronapocalypse. And that spurred us to think about whether this is an, a, a good time for us to put a thought piece out to our portfolio to help them prepare. Now, the last time you did this was back in the 08-09 financial crisis, and it was called RIP Good Times. Do you see the situation um, along those lines getting worse, as bad as that, or less severe? We hope not. We sincerely hope not. This is a serious matter. Lives are at, at, are at risk. There are people being affected by this today. I think back then, the global financial crisis was a very different situation, and it clearly affected fundraising and capital formation and companies' finances far more directly. Here, we're at the cusp of something that may have that kind of economic effect, but we don't know yet. Now, we've seen massive changes in the venture landscape since the 08-09 crisis, the rise of the so-called tourist investors, um, mutual funds, hedge funds, sovereign wealth funds have become much more involved in private markets. How do you think they react? Do they react with more fear or perhaps an opportunity to get deeper into the venture landscape? My guess is fear is going to dominate today. Uh, if you look at the volatility in the stock market over the last two weeks, the fact that we've had $3 trillion of market cap evaporate from the S&P 500 I think fear is forefront in people's minds. Roloff Morgan here. I, I wanted to get your take on a line that really jumped out to me in this letter, uh, and that's that it will take considerable time, perhaps several quarters, before we can be confident that the virus has been contained. It could take even longer for the global economy to recover its footing. At least from a Wall Street uh, perspective right now, so much of the discussion is around this idea or this expectation that this could only be maybe a one to two quarter phenomenon. Why do you think it could stretch out longer and what could the impact therefore be? You can hear. So let me relay the question. Um, Morgan was talking about the timing in your letter. You said that this may play out over the next few corners, but the quarters, but the impact, the economic impact could be much longer. That seems to be at odds with what Wall Street at large is thinking that this may have a one to two quarter effect. Why do you see the effect as potentially longer? I think it depends on the wider economic ripple effect. Uh, there's a well-known multiplier effect in economics. And I worry that this may lead to a, con a contraction. It may. There's no evidence of it yet. But if trips are being canceled, airlines are down, restaurant business is down, does that cause a ripple effect through the economy where jobs start to shrink and that we end up having a self-fulfilling prophecy of a recession? Now, we had Larry Kudlow on this morning um, saying that, you know, we shouldn't panic and everything's under control. Do you think that there's a disconnect between what the administration is saying and what you're seeing in private markets and VC? I agree that we shouldn't panic right now, but I think you need to have a prepared mind, and that's exactly what we wanted to do for our founders. We've been in business for almost 50 years, and we've seen many economic cycles, and we help companies from the earliest stages through IPO and beyond, and we want to leverage that experience to help people prepare for what might be. We hope it, it doesn't pan out that way, but what might be. Now, you mentioned business travel is coming down. I know that Sequoia canceled, or didn't cancel, I'm sorry, moved its LP meeting from India to Half Moon Bay, and now it's going to happen on Zoom. A number of other conferences are canceled. I know that a lot can happen remotely, but the importance of FaceTime for founders and CEOs and investors, that is going to take a hit. What do you think the effects of that will be? And how important is that FaceTime? I think FaceTime is important. We're, we're a social creature. There's so many nonverbal cues we pick up when we meet in person and reading people's body language. So I think in-person meetings, partnerships, sales that depend on that kind of in-person uh, in relationship will suffer as a result of this. But I'm hoping that it's temporary. In the meantime, we were an investor in Zoom. We're, you know, they're clearly a massive beneficiary of virtual meetings, which can accomplish a lot. <laughs> now, if someone is willing to buy a portfolio company, what do you tell the founder or CEO? Should they go ahead and do it in this kind of environment? To make M&A, to mm -hmm. make acquisition? Uh, we had that conversation later today at one of our portfolio companies, actually, in the, in the board materials as I was preparing. And I think you need to continue to plan to go forward. I mean, chaos creates opportunity. 
it creates risk, but it also creates opportunity. And so it may be a time to lean in and to take advantage of opportunities. Mike Moritz gave us advice at PayPal in 2000 that we needed to really tighten our belts because fundraising may dry up. But we didn't stop hiring. If anything, we kept on growing and we made the most of a fabulous opportunity in 2001 when the rest of the market was timid. Now, companies that are looking to go public potentially this year and the next few years, some big ones in your portfolio, I won't ask about them specifically, but do you think that public market investors are going to have a harder time valuing them? What does that do to their plans? Well, I think great companies can always go public. And I remember how we were ridiculed at PayPal for being the first dot-com to go public in 2002. If you have a great business, you can go public. A separate question is about valuation. And clearly, if you see the sell-off in the market right now, there's a lot of uncertainty. And so maybe companies won't price as well as they would have otherwise, but I still think they're able to go public. And in the long term, they make that up. Well, the long run, they make that up. And that's you know, part of the beauty of our business, honestly, is we're willing to be very patient. Uh, many of our companies, we're still on the boards and hold shares many years after they go public. And so we're really focused on that long run. Rilof, thank you for being with us today.